So this piece is part of the wedding collection on the site. I have a number of pieces that I've arranged for like gigs and weddings and things like that. Um, things like Hey Zoo, Joy of Man's Desiring by Bach, um, Canon and D by Pacabo, and um, Air on the G String by Bach. A number of other um, pieces that would go well at many gigs as well as weddings and things like that. And so for this arrangement, I've really just put the melody in there and a, a simplified melody and then tried to keep like a running eighth note or the original has triplets but a running eighth note kind of feel to the rhythm just to keep the movement going along so this is a very simple arrangement so there's many rhythmic and harmonic differences from the original um, but that said um, i think this will be nice and easy um, sight readable for gigs for the most part a um, couple little tiny sections to look over but for the most part should be pretty straightforward for uh, intermediate guitarists so in terms of having a lesson on this piece, um, I think the main thing is just learn the melody as well as you can, as, as legato as you can. So just play the melody on its own. And as you go through it, Um, so just all the stems up on the notation is, of course, uh, the melody. So play that melody on its own until it feels very legato and feels the way you want it to sound. Of course, listen to the song lots, um, the, you know, the piano and, and, and voice version. But get to know it really well um, so that you get the essence of the piece. Because there's lots of things missing from the arrangement, of course. But I've tried to keep it, um, you know, um, as easy as possible. But with an intact melody and enough of accompaniment to keep the piece moving along nicely. So after you've learned the melody um, really well and nice and legato, throw in that accompaniment figure, but just keep it nice and soft. So like, because you want to highlight the melody. And there's a certain like ad hoc nature to the accompaniment because I've tried to, re you know, just highlight the melody and keep the accompaniment as minimal as possible. So if you, if you, lower the volume of the accompaniment just a little bit and highlight the melody, um, that ad hoc nature of the accompaniment won't be uh, brought out on purpose or anything like that. And you'll just get the nice sweet melody that you want. So in, you don't want this. You know, where all the notes are even, um, which would really obscure the, the sustaining melody note. So just keep the accompaniment nice and soft tried to keep all the accompaniment notes below the melody notes so that there be not too many clashes in terms of uh, the range of the accompaniment and the melody. So that should help keep the melody pretty prominent and pretty clear. The main thing that you want to remember is that you just have to sustain notes, right? You have to hold, um, when you see a note that's like a dotted half note in this piece, that lasts for a very long time. So keep your finger down on those notes. Places like the first bar, you know, or even in the fourth bar. Got to keep that fourth finger down until the rest of the melody notes come into the mix, right? There's really just two um, tiny spots that are a little bit tricky, maybe three. Bar seven, play the E here and do a bar. Um, you really want that like suspension from or that you know non chord tone to resolve nicely so make sure you're sustaining that e and then an open string this chord is not that hard but you just have to be ready for it i mean you have to know this chord shape this diminished seven chord shape so just make sure you really know that diminished seven chord shape um, so that you can grab it easily when you get to that part of the piece the C there and then just reach down and then you're home free for a little bit maybe the only other part that um, warrants a little bit of attention is that bar 19 um, you're going along try to 
keep that F sharp down if you can. It's not that hard, um, but just keep an eye on it. Make sure you're sustaining it. You'll get a better sense of the connection of the F sharp going to the eventual G in the bass. Just like a little bit of voice leading for this piece. I mean, for the most part, just um, sustain all the notes within each half note um, harmony or whole note harmony. But um, um, just when you're practicing it, just make sure you go over it once with very close attention to the sustain of each note. If I've listed a melody note in particular as being a long note, do your best to actually sustain that for a long period of time. Besides that, I don't think you'll find any difficulties in the piece. It's pretty straightforward, not too difficult, and uh, hopefully will come in handy uh, for the occasional gig and, and whatnot.